It took a while, but I finally got around to making this video. Now, when I saw the A33's price and specs, I immediately felt that this was going to sell the most among the top A series devices, because even though it was the cheapest, it retained a lot of good things the other two phones had, like the design. From the back, you can't tell them apart. It has a matte plastic back as well as a plastic frame, but it just looks premium for some reason. Maybe it's the look of the camera module or the matte finish or even the feel in the hand. It just feels like an expensive phone, as it should, because this costs about $320 or about 185,000 Naira. And for that price, you want to feel comfortable pulling out your phone in public or walking around with it in your hand, you know? And I felt that confidence. I saw people looking and I was like, yeah, it's the new Samsung. But I think one of the reasons why people were looking is the fact that it's a white phone. It sticks out, especially in the dark, but if you're trying to be more stealth, you can get the black or just get a case. I feel the urge now to mention that you only get a cable in the box and it's most likely not the kind that works with your previous charging brick so i guess i'm trying to say you're going to be buying a lot more than a case in terms of durability it comes with an ip67 rating for dust and water resistance and for the screen you get gorilla glass 5 protection so it should handle scratches better definitely don't drop your phone because it will break uh, also, the part where the frame and back meet doesn't retain as much dirt, if any, compared to the A23's design, so I like that. And the white colour surprisingly still looks white after like a month, but obviously you don't expect it to always be that way. So you should probably get a case. Overall, design is pretty great. It feels premium, it has a matte back, so no fingerprint marks. It's made of plastic, so it's also more durable than glass. And these are the things it shares with the more expensive A53 and 73. But when you flip the phone to the front, then you see why this is the cheaper phone. From the amount of bezels to the U-shaped notch, that's how you spot the A33. I believe they could have easily used a hole punch cutout and shrunk the bezels a little bit. I mean, there are cheaper phones that have done that, but when you make a lot of phones that are pretty close in price, you have to do little things to differentiate one from the other. And although I don't like it, I understand it. Ignoring the non-aesthetic bezels for a little bit, you notice the quite beautiful display. It's 6.4 inches, so smaller than the A53 and A73. It has a resolution of 1080 by 2400 pixels. It's a super AMOLED display with a 90 hertz refresh rate. It could have been 120 hertz if they wanted to, but again, they had to drop it down a notch. On paper, it's close to perfect, and in real life, it is too. I mean, we can go on and on about how beautiful this display is, or how vibrant the colors look. I think this is one of the reasons to get this phone. It's also pretty bright outdoors, with a peak brightness of 700 nits. Now, if you can ignore the bezels, which frankly you will, because after a while you just get used to it and you don't notice it, then the only other problem could be the size. Because I have big hands and this phone is quite small. I mean, it makes typing a bit stressful. So if you have big hands, that's something to consider. It has two screen modes, vivid and natural, so there's still room for tweaking if perhaps you find the display too well vivid you can also choose between 90 hertz and 60 hertz and yes there is a difference there's also adaptive brightness which is super useful dark mode of course which paired with the amoled display definitely helps save battery and also edge panel which i never used but it is there it comes with android 12 out of the box and samsung promises four years of major os updates and five years of security updates now, Android 12 brought a lot of visual changes, and Samsung, with One UI 4.1, put their own spin on it. You can choose a palette based on colors from your wallpaper, and that will be used all around the UI, and you can also use it on app icons as well. We've also got widgets. There are a bunch of apps that support it, with more definitely to come in the future. You get to see how it will look before you add them, and with a bunch of other customization options available to Android, you can have a new look every single day. 
Android 12 brings a privacy feature, you know, it kind of notifies you when an app uses your camera or microphone with a green icon at the top right. So look out for that. There's a screen recorder, thankfully, smart view, nearby share, live transcribe. It's supposed to be this, you know, revolutionary feature. And I think it is. I also think you should like this video and subscribe. Nice. Holding the power button summons Bixby. So to power the device off, you need to hold the power button and volume down button, or you can change the settings to normal. Quickly, just want to touch on security here. They've gone with an on-the-display fingerprint sensor. It's not the ultrasonic kind like on their flagships, but the optical one which shines a light on your finger to read your print and then unlock your phone. And for me, it has worked maybe 95% of the time, maybe even higher. It's pretty accurate, but even if it's such a cool feature, it's not as fast as a side-mounted one like on the cheaper A23. And even if your finger is a little bit moist, thankfully it would still unlock. It also has face unlock. I don't know, I'm feeling a bit tired. I don't know if you want to take over. Nice, thanks. Okay. Thanks, never knew this day would come. Um, okay, uh, <clears throat> okay. I just followed, okay. Um, let's talk about performance then, yeah. It's back in the same chip on the Galaxy A53, the Exynos 1280, with a Mali G68 GPU and up to 8GB of RAM. It's a rather new chip and especially for gaming, there's a lot of optimizing yet to be done. It has really good potential, it also has really good benchmark scores, and for everyday tasks, this runs really smooth, even for some heavy multitasking. It can't hold too many apps for too long without having to restart them. And for some of the heavier game titles, it should be able to play them, but uh, currently not at the best settings. So we're still waiting for developers to make use of that extra power. But for now, no. But for most people, to be honest, you will be fine with what you're currently getting. At least I was. My only concern was with heating, or should I say overheating. Now, whenever I had mobile data turned on, that's 4G, uh, together with mobile hotspot turned on, and I was doing something on my phone, like playing FIFA Mobile or just watching YouTube videos, after a couple minutes, like 20 minutes, the phone begins to heat up. And it's not like warm, it's like hot. The screen gets really hot to the point where I'm like, okay, maybe I need to you know, turn everything off and let the phone cool down. There was also another time where I was streaming the FA Cup final, on the phone and then I used smart view to cast it to the TV and after like 20-30 minutes of the game the phone again started to heat up. It wasn't plugged in, hotspot wasn't turned on but it just started to heat up. Now it's kind of normal for phones to get warm when you overuse them or they're performing like really heavy tasks but for me it was closer to hot so I think that's a problem. But then again that was when I was doing a bit too much on my phone and for the most part, the temperatures were actually fine. Now, this is what I experienced while using the A33. Uh, so it's possible that this particular unit could be faulty or maybe just needs a software update to fix. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that the A33 might have an overheating problem. So definitely, if you use the A33, leave a comment down below and tell me your experience uh, with it. Are you experiencing any overheating problems? Just let me know. Now, what's not going to be a problem would be the cameras. I mean, cameras are one of the best at this price. And as Izzy showed in his comparison video with the A53, the cameras are kind of close, even though on paper, the A33 has less numbers. Uh, we have a 48 megapixel main sensor, an eight megapixel ultra wide, five megapixel macro, and a two megapixel depth sensor. The photos from the A33 are really good. The rare cameras produce really detailed images. HDR is so good too. Taking pictures with the sky in it are just so pleasing to look at. It's one of those phones that would encourage you really to take pictures. In darker conditions, it also does kind of pretty well. So yes, I did take some night mode shots and I was, I was impressed. I really was impressed uh, with the cameras. You definitely tell me what you think about the photos that you're seeing. Now we have a 13 megapixel selfie camera and I do think it's really good but definitely not as impressive as the main camera for me. I took some videos as well with the rear camera 
outdoors and they turned out really good. It shoots up to 4K 30 frames per second from both the rear and front facing camera, which is impressive. But if you want the most steady footage, you have to switch to 1080p because that's the only one that supports uh, ultra steady mode. I used the A33 to do a little BTS indoors and I really like what I got out of the camera. So for me, cameras, they're definitely an A. Battery life is subjective because even I don't have the same experience every day. It depends on how you use your phone. If you're playing games constantly, yes, you can kill this by the middle of the day. An hour of heavy gaming can take about 15% of the battery life. An hour of YouTube could take about 10%. So on days when you're constantly playing games or watching videos on your phone, you wouldn't think the battery life is great. But on other days when you're not, like days where your screen on time is about three to four, even five hours, you definitely appreciate this phone's battery life. Or at least that was my experience. For charging speeds, well, it depends on what charger you buy. It supports 25 watt fast charging, but uh, you have to pay an extra $15, which I honestly think is ridiculous. They're currently doing a sort of promo where if you were buying the A33 or A53, you do get the 25 watt charger along with Samsung K Plus, but only in the month of May. So if you were you know, thinking of buying the A33, maybe now is the time. I think this is like only for Africa or Nigeria, I don't know. Now, here are some little things that didn't quite fit into a category. There is NFC on the A33. There's also no headphone jack. There's only one speaker, but it's actually really loud. Oh, and there is expandable storage up to one terabyte. And of course, 5G, it's literally in the name, which probably should be a bigger deal. But for now, in Nigeria, there is no 5G, so it's not a big deal. Great phone in all. Might be the cheapest in the top three, but still packs a lot of value. I love the design and the display. It's definitely world class if you can ignore the bezels and you like compact phones. Uh, performance is what you'd expect at this price and really has the potential to get even better, but it might have heating issues. Cameras are best in its class and battery life is pretty okay, but definitely not for you know, heavy users. So yeah, that's my full review of the Galaxy A33. I'll be taking my SIM out of it now and I wonder which phone I will be putting it in. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you when you see me.